I get it. And you're welcome along to the show. Coming up, uh, we have a busy one for you. We're talking to Jackie Oatley about um, the World Cup. So, <laughs> there's uh, something mad going on in my ears. I'll plow on, I'm taking the headphones out, sorry. So, sorry about this, it's a strange start to the show this evening. Coming up, we're talking Women's World Cup with Jackie Oatley, Phil Neville, far from impressed with uh, Cameroon last night. On the GAA front, oh, shit, Kieran Donaghy, Brendan Devenny run the rule over the weekend's games. All too easy for Dublin again. Question marks over Kerry and Donegal uh, looking very impressive. The text number is 53106. We're at Off The Ball on Twitter. We'll be joined by Dan McDonald in a moment. Richie McCormick is here. Hello. Hey, Joe. Uh, been uh, a bit better. Some technical difficulties. We're working our way through them. Grand Joe. Once they're all sorted by 9 o'clock, I don't care. Covering for Tom for the next oh, two weeks. Going to stretch my legs. Oh, good man. Going to freak out the squares, Joe. Play some music. What's in the offing this evening? Uh, good question. Finalising the playlist as we speak. Okay. I've been inspired a lot by, I don't know if you saw the Yacht Rock uh, documentary that was on BBC4 the last two weekends. It's basically anything to detract from the fact that I was at Crow Park yesterday and witnessed a uh, one-sided slobber knocker. Yeah. It's a weird first half. Do you know what? The, the weird thing about it was, if Meath had not hit the post three times in the first half, I believe it was, and uh, a succession of dropped shots close into Cluxon's mm. chest and a couple of wides on top of that as well, there was a chance that they would have had questions to ask of Dublin yeah. at half time and it's a completely different game the four point thing is a bit strange because yes they missed a host of chances defensively though they were quite good I uh, thought they were really well organised painfully slow in their build up and their approach play and they're trying to find runners and find breaks and trying to find uh, chinks in the Dublin armour but it could have been so much different mm. if, they, like, if it, it's basically you can fault wides and you can fault shots that go short yeah but the, the hitting the bar three times, or hitting the, the, the upright three times, it's just yeah. freakish. Even the, fir- the free in the first couple of minutes would have been a nice one and to he, get over. And, and you consider how low scoring that first half was, like they would have been within, what, two, three points at the, at the break? 5-1 also made sound like it was a dreadful game or defensive. Like, I found watching it here, there was a good pace to it, it was very alive, and Meath were getting physical with Dublin and trying to make them uncomfortable, and it was a very wet day as well, and so balls were being dropped. And, oh, the conditions you know, helped nobody. Yeah, it was you know sloppy at times from Dublin as well. So it wasn't awful. It's just when the scoreline becomes what it becomes, it looks dreadful, and the last twenty minutes are a waste of time for everybody. So yeah, it was quite clear that you know Dublin weren't great. Meads weren't didn't have the scoring boots on. No, and then Dublin once they finally woke up, put the boot down, and by that stage nobody has any interest. I, I, I was listening to you lads yesterday afternoon, like you, you were throwing to Anthony Miles oh, yeah. like, forward and back, and it was just striking like the tone of the. The discussion, like there was the, you know, I I, I flicked over in half time and full time, and it was just like, yeah, ugh. what's it all about? Yeah, and it's like it's just it's I don't know, it's sort of infectious almost, like you know, it, it just all the discussions about it that I had with people maybe later in the day is, is all along the same mm. tone. I thought the first half was okay, you know, I thought first it was half was fine, very, very, very reasonable. reasonable. Yeah. People were probably just expecting it to happen, though, right? Like, yeah. was there any feeling of suspense or tension in the no. ground? It was Not like one. this is close. This is fortunately closer. Yeah. The, only, the only semblance, <laughs> the only semblance of an atmosphere or excitement came when Conor Callan found the net. Like the, the the place was alive and hopping when the goal went in. Beyond well, that, it was a succession of at, at full time. Blows. At full time, said Anthony was there for us. I said, "So who got the goal? I didn't quite see." Told, you know, told us about the goal. He's like, "Um, yeah, no, I don't. I'm not sure." I had a long night with the kids last night. I'm a bit tired. This game's been over <laughs> a long time. He was broken. He was a bit broken. As a Mead man, former player, in fairness to him, he said as much as well. As a former player, it's kind of tough to remember what these days used to be and to see them now. The other three provincial finals in football were very reasonable. Donegal probably comfortable against Cavan, but at yeah. least there was a bit of life to it and it was a good occasion. The Roscommon win over Galway was amazing. And then Cork made a fist of it on Saturday. So it wasn't like three or two out of the four were awful, but Leinster seems to be in massive trouble. But if you're going to say, well, we need to scrap the provincials, you could very understandably see people in Ulster saying, well, we've had a really good Ulster Championship don't touch art, what we have. You know, the Roscommon win over Galway validated Connacht to an extent. The Munster final wasn't terrible, so if you get rid of one of them, you have to kind of get rid of them all. That's it's, the tricky thing. It's such, like, it's such a multifaceted argument. Like, you could literally spend two, three days. Well, and it's, not, it's just it's even down to, like, structures and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's a whole funding issue. It's a whole uh, the under-the-table nature of, of 
payments to, to managers, et cetera, et cetera. Like, so much more openness is required for this to actually change in a positive way. Mm, mm. Lads, Cameron and ladies, disgraceful. Carry on, please discuss. We will be doing that with Jackie Oatley come half past seven. She's over there for the host broadcaster. You'll know her from BBC as well. Cameron players didn't cover themselves in glory. Phil Neville, not happy. Dan? No, his quotes were strong. I didn't actually see... I've it's seen disgrace, some of the highlights, he but uh, he, he really went big on the... No, this is actually about promoting the women's game angle mm. and his, in his quotes afterwards. That was his line of attack, which I know there's obviously split views about like distilling every piece of analysis on the tournament into what does this say about yeah. women's football, you know, mm. but in this, in this particular You do see similar context, conversations when s- s- unsavoury things happen at a World Cup. People go, this is a World Cup, this is the global mm. uh, expo for the game and you know things should be treated in far more uh, respectful manner. But it's gas to see somebody who's a teammate of Roy Keane and Eric Cantona come out against foul play. Yeah, and just, you know, having a go with the referee or whatever it might be. Surrounding the referee. Andy, what was it, Andy Durso, was it, the, 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 the Manchester United Middlesbrough game back in the day? Yeah. But it did seem to be slightly chaotic mm. and it probably crossed the lines of, uh, you know, decency in terms of behaviour. But really, was the, was the controversy really a bad thing? No. Was it a bad thing for the women's game? No, absolutely not. I think like, like back pages all across the UK. I yesterday. genuinely think like as the competition's gone on, people have really got into it a bit more, and just into and it just adds to the storylines and the debates. And of course, you have to, you have to be, you know, you have to condemn uh, behaviour that's like inappropriate, or whatever. Yeah. But but I'm not 100 percent sure about putting in the context of this is bad for women's football. Or, no. You know, the, like the, to link it in with that. This is just behaviour by a team, and and it seems like their supporters and officials and people around it debate it as that yeah. rather than a, you know suggesting that because we're trying to grow the women's game that this shouldn't happen. Mm. Like so so no. In like, terms of the growing, people don't lose the plot over something. Yeah. Then that's fine. They're not suddenly thinking actually maybe I shouldn't do this because this could be bad for the perception of women. I think it's, it's it's great crack. Mm. It's, 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 like it's people little, care. Yeah. They felt aggrieved, just as people like you know. There's all sorts of unreasonable and irrational responses to decisions yeah. that you feel have gone against you. Yeah, we tried to get into a World Cup as a 33rd team. You know what I mean? Like, was that bad for men's football that that was happening? You know, yeah, so yes. I'd say yes. Well, possibly it was. You know, and, fine, and Seth fine. Blatter was there to be an authority on the on the whole topic. But the lads, it's I got a show. Strong advocate for women's football, Seth, of course. It becomes a talking point this morning. Did you see the game last night? Mm. That's exactly what the World Cup needs. You know, controversy adds to all that, and people who didn't see it, myself included, I missed it. You feel like, yeah. oh, I wish I'd seen it because I've tried to get the highlights. To see the full extent of the madness, there are suggestions. I think I, I, needed, I needed to watch. The, I needed to watch. The, I think there's a sense you need to watch the whole thing probably in, Maybe. in its entirety as it develops. But even the official highlights on YouTube, they whitewash all the good stuff. So you don't see any of the controversies. You don't see the alleged spit. You, you don't, don't see, see the, the gathering in the centre. Like made down tools. Is this the FIFA sanctioned highlights? Is this the happy clappy FIFA sanctioned highlights? Ah, okay. Because yeah. even I remember we were on the paper review a couple of weeks ago. There were we were talking about the U.S. celebrations against Thailand. Oh, they were gone as well, were they? I mean, they showed some celebrations, but they didn't show like the conga line next to the Suze bench at goal 13. <laughs> I mean, that was all I done. Mean, in fairness, <laughs> they don't use it for two minutes to show all of 13 goals. I know. But, the celebrations as well, Joe. But show the, the good stuff that everyone's yeah. talking about. And they've yeah. totally cut it from the highlights. So there is obviously a fine it. line from between that and Ultra Saints. There isn't all a bit of a wheeze as well. Like, it obviously is serious, but it's just the sense that they're not like, you know. It, it, I think the, the genuine passion and anger is probably a, no, a totally. good thing. Like, there were some nasty elements to it. Bad the tackle. England yeah. captain could have had her ankle broken. Yeah. It was just a really nasty tackle right at the end. That for sure. And I think that's what Neville took with him straight into the press conference because that happened in front of him right at the death. But the other stuff is not yeah. quite harmless, but it's close enough. Yeah, and the one point was he was suggesting that the referee didn't give a penalty at the end, wasn't it? To yeah. to almost maintain order. to maintain order, as though uh, I guess to be fair, if if Cameron had walked off the pitch and the game hadn't been restarted, or you know, if 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 there'd been a, a stoppage, I suppose the headlines to contradict myself, but the headlines and that probably would have gone down a particular route. As in, this the, is a farce. Yeah, yeah, maybe. And, maybe, and maybe so. I, I can maybe see to an aspect, see a degree of where he's getting at, but overall, I'm not. So sure. No, I'm not too worried about it. So let, let's start the uh, news round. IRFU have concluded their investigation. Yeah, and the IRFU say that investigation into what they call inappropriate behaviour by a player after Leinster's Pro 14 final victory has concluded. A statement says the player in question has been sanctioned and apologised to the individual involved in the incident. The IRFU and the player regret any upset the incident has caused. On legal advice, we're not naming the player. 
certainly not his finest hour to say the least. Do we have any idea the nature of the sanction? Sanction as well is uh, walled off, okay. uh, so we have no idea what that sanction would entail. Okay, okay. Details are scant. Yeah, certainly seems that way. That was pretty much the extent of the press release today? Pretty short, yeah, right. okay. pretty short. Is there any sense that the player may talk about it or apologise, or is it just going to be statement? And I would say, given the fact that they did not name the player in question in the statement, yeah. and that he has apologised to the individual, apologised and shows sincere regret for any upset caused by the incident, and has been sanctioned accordingly by the IRFU, that's that. They're hoping to leave it at that? Yeah. Okay. Mm. USA won this evening? Yeah, the holders are through to the Women's World Cup quarterfinals. Two goals from Megan Rapinoe, the second from the penalty spot, awarded via consultation uh, from VAR. Secured a 2-1 win over a rather gallant Spain outfit, and the US will face the host France in Paris in the quarterfinals on Friday. At 8 o'clock, Sweden play Canada, with the winners of that one face Germany in Rennes on Saturday. Lads, what does it say at the bottom of Richie's t-shirt? Bernie Sanders is dot dot dot. Magical. A nation, a nation holds its breath. You really, you, you just you couldn't know what to to stand up. There. there we go. Bernie Sanders is magical. Magical. And he is. It's all kicking off again, isn't it? It is. Ramping up. Are they in... Every four years Iowa? or so. Iowa? Iowa? Oh, no, we're not, we're not there yet. We're not Donald there. Trump is canvassing there over the weekend. Well, no, Trump is doing campaign rallies after three months of being president, yeah. Yeah. to be fair. so He's, he's officially declared he's running again. Him and, him and Biden were in the same state there. Yeah. Biden's a accident waiting to happen. Yeah. And Bernie's going again, I presume. Bernie's going again. There's uh, Clatter, there's uh, Kamala Harris is, is going again there for the mm. Democrats. Mm -hmm. What's them. Fewer names. Great crack. Another good year in the, in the offing. It's always good when it's, uh, you know, the, one of the, well, not the biggest country in the world, obviously, but like one of the most uh, you know, developed countries in the world, and yet you still know the same four or five names that are thrown around again. Yeah. It's always a bit dispiriting, I would have thought. It's always just great fun to follow. I love an election. It's, year I love US. US it's American, just yeah, it's great. brilliant. Mm. It's just, they do it so well. I mean, it's nonsensical in so many ways, but so good to follow. Let's go to New Hampshire and let them dictate the course of the world. Iowa. <laughs> yeah. A bunch of farmers in Iowa. I know. I'm experts on swing states. There's like 50 people holding the, the balance in their hand. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Rafa Benitez. Gone. Uh, Newcastle fans reacting angrily to the news that Benitez is leaving the club. The Spaniards' contract expires at the end of this month and the club say they could not reach an agreement for an extension. With limited resources and constant boardroom uncertainty, Benitez guided Newcastle to back-to-back mid-table finishes in the Premier League, having won the Championship in 2017. Newcastle say the process to appoint a successor is underway. Is there talk of a uh, fancy offer from China? ultimately tempting him across the line, is that what's going on? Well, I think there was suggestions today that there was ulterior reasons, you know, for okay. his exit. Um, and I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, this is deeply unpopular mm. Newcastle regime, so I don't think... I, I'm always wary of any story that seems to be coming out that seems to be trying to get there to say, well, it's not as clear-cut as you might seem. I think... I don't know. I don't. We don't know enough about Rafa to say would he would would his preference be to take the Chinese money anyway over staying at Newcastle. But he did seem to have a genuine sense from the people who covered Newcastle that he really tried to understand and develop and sort of harness the potential that's undoubtedly there. Mm. And I don't think he would have wanted to leave that if the club was functioning normally. So sure. to put out the Chinese thing as a uh, well, no, no. He's he, in some way there was a disloyalty here. I think that would probably be. Okay. I, don't, I don't think people are going to buy that. Uh, the qualifiers, times and dates. Yes, yeah, CCC confirming the throw-in times for this Saturday's third round qualifiers in the All Ireland Senior Football Championship. Uh, Kildare will play host to Tyrone at St Connellys Park in Newbridge. It's going to be a 5 p.m. throw-in on Saturday evening for that one. At six, Westmead will take on Clare at TG Cusick Park in Mullingar, and the two remaining games both throw in at seven with neighbours Offaly and Leash meeting at Omar Park, and Mayo will face Armagh in Castle Bar. They should be good games. The Kildare Tyrone game and the Mayo Armagh game in Castle Bar both on. Sky Sports, so you, good degree of you will be able to see them one way or another. They should be uh, decent. It does make you think. Got a year since Newbridge or Nowhere kicked off. We seem so far removed from it as well. Like just in terms of what Kildare can possibly achieve in the qualifiers, I don't yeah. think there's the same sense that Tyrone are going to go there and be rolled over or you know threaten to be rolled over. I think people are thinking, even though Tyrone aren't at the peak of their powers, yeah. probably should win that one. It's certainly a sticky tie. And a Newbridge tight pitch crowd up for it, you know. It, it's not the a same given. thing for Antrim at the weekend as well. It's like two thousand yeah, small pitch, and it didn't happen at all. It like. didn't happen. You'd like to think Kildare are a bit closer to Tyrone than Antrim are to Kildare, and then Mayo hosting Armagh. 
Kieran McGinney in his uh, fifth year seems to be having maybe his best season thus far and Mayo, a patch, yeah. Yeah, Mayo starting to put things together so we'll talk to Brennan Devenny and Kieran Donaghy just after 8 o'clock about the weekend's football uh, Dublin as we mentioned securing a ninth consecutive Leicester football title yesterday with that 117 to 4 point win over Mead at Crow Park the Royals had 11 first half shots but only one point to show for themselves at the break they'll go into the Super 8s off the back of a 16 point defeat but coach Cullum Nally knows they can make a better showing of themselves in the next phase uh, well, they're not stupid. They know they're good players. Um, you know, they, they know they should have scored more. Um, we, we've done it. We do a lot of work on shooting. We do a lot of work on the skills of the game. Um, for, whatever, for whatever reason, there today just didn't work. But uh, no, no, no they, they'll be. We'll, we'll put the positive spin on them, and, and they'll, they'll be able to take the positives out of it because there's many. Uh, guys, I can't believe you're not questioning the handling of the rugby issue. The lack of transparency is appalling. Off the ball rugby bias. Malachi and Donegal certainly happy to read out the text. Malachi, we took legal advice. Is the truth on whether or not we uh, could or should name the player and that is the reason we're not. The lawyers told us not to, so we're not doing it. But certainly it's not a rugby bias at all. Uh, nobody here approves of urinating on another person. I think we can safely say that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure that player is going to have to address the issue at some stage. We think in the so. Future. Yeah. It would be impossible not to. Yeah, no. So that's um, the situation, Malachi, to be honest with you. More than happy to read out the text and address that. Where are we going next? Uh, to Donegal, who secured back-to-back -back Ulster titles with a 124-216 win over Cavan in Clonus yesterday. Declan Boner's side had 12 different scorers and among them, five points from the boot with Paddy McBrearty. Ah, we've, we've, we've threats everywhere, hey. Um, Donegal team's gone past. You could probably nullify one or two players in attack and you could probably stop the attack, but the lads we have here now, you know, six, the six forwards at start are, are always a threat, so that's, that, that's the main difference and that's the main aim we had going into this year is that everyone in the team's a threat and I think we've we're doing that at the minute. A cloud was cast on this win, unfortunately, yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. Donegal's success on the pitch came on the same day that Manus Kelly lost his life in the Donegal International Rally. A uh, Donegal County Councillor, recently re-elected and a popular figure in the rally community as well, Kelly was killed and his navigator injured in a crash in Fannet. Motorsport Ireland and Donegal Motor Club extended their fullest sympathies to the family and friends of the three-time winner of the rally and a tribute to welcome in from across the political world too, uh, following that sad, sad passing. Uh, Andy Boyle has rejoined Dundalk. The centre half left the Lilywhites for Preston in January 2017, but was loaned out on three separate occasions by the Championship Club, most recently at Ross County. Uh, Boyle will officially join the League of Ireland Premier Division leaders on July the 1st and just in time for their Champions League qualifying campaign, which begins against Riga FC at Royal Park on July the 10th. The 28 year old says he's arriving back in good nick and knows he can't just walk back into the starting 11. So it's a tough team to get into at the moment, obviously, you can see. Uh, lads, are, lads are doing well, and um, I might have bought your time and stuff like that. But uh, I think going forward, uh, it's there's going to be so many games and so many big games um, to look forward to. Especially as you said, the, the European games, which just before I left were the, were big highlights of the career, my career so far as well. And um, hopefully, we can have more of them. He'll be welcome back. He will. I mean, they, they actually have three very good central defenders there at the moment with Brian Gartland, Sean Hoare and, and Daniel Cleary. So they've been sort of rotating them this year. So, But I, th I think, th I think the, the line that was taken was if a good player like that becomes available, you still go for them. You still don't stand still, you know, even if their need for him probably wasn't um, that pressing. So, yeah, it's strange. It's obviously a bit disappointing it didn't really happen for him. I remember he was on this show at one point and he broke into the team at Preston soon enough. He played for Ireland. Um, but once Simon Grayson left, the manager that brought him there, he was sort of done. Mm. Alex Neal came in, didn't fancy him, wanted a different type of defender. And, and since then, he's been drifting a bit. He's had three loan spells, played, played games at all of those clubs, but... It wasn't going to happen, you know. In in the in the at the level that he went over, to probably try and make it happen. At mm. and um, what he's twenty eight now, I think he could have stayed in, across the water for the sake of it, but has obviously decided, yeah, come back home. Meanwhile, Ulster's uh, Marcel Kutzi has been called up to South Africa's upcoming training squad for the Rugby Championship. The 28-year-old back row hasn't featured for the box since joining the Irish province in 2016, with the last of his 28 caps coming against Argentina prior to the 2015 World Cup. He returned from a serious knee injury to play 23 times and score five tries for Ulster last season. Uh, the European Games ongoing in Minsk. Boxers Grania Walsh, Michaela Walsh and Kurt Walker all progressed to the respective quarterfinals in Minsk today. Just one fight away now from 
from potentially winning medals. However, Dean Gardner lost his super heavyweight last 16 contest to his Georgian opponent. And in the past hour or so ago, his Kieran Malloy lost his welterweight last 16 bout 4-1 to Yoheni de Helivats of Belarus. Earlier, Nat Wen won his first group match in the men's singles badminton. And Chloe and Sam McGee came from a game down to beat Russia's Dremin Evgeny and Demira Evgenia in, to win their first match of their mixed doubles group. And Aoife Gormley and Derek Burnett finished sixth in the mixed trap shooting. Last story too. A uh, mixed, uh, sorry, a joint bid even, a mixed bid too, uh, from Italy has been chosen to host the 2026 Winter Olympics. The IOC voted for Milan and Cortina D'Ampezzo ahead of Stockholm to stage the 25th Winter Games. There are only two candidates left after the other four bidders dropped out with concerns over the size and the cost of the Games. It'll be the third time that Italy has hosted a Winter Olympics. In Group D of the Africa Cup of Nations this afternoon, the Ivory Coast beat South Africa by a goal to nail in Cairo. That goal coming from Aston Villa's Jonathan Khadija. Uh, the first of this evening's group E encounters kicked off at 6 in Suez where Tunisia lead Angola by a goal to nil a former Bohemians winger Ayman Ben Mohammed is on the bench for Tunisia in that one and 9 then Mali face Mauritania and Bangladesh picked up a win which keeps alive their hopes of a semi-final place at the Cricket World Cup their 62 run victory over Afghanistan moves them to within a point of the top 4 in the group stage of the competition Bangladesh all-rounder Shakib Al-Hassan took 5 wickets after hitting half century with the bat. Okay, Rich, thanks for that. Before we uh, get over to Jackie Oatley in France, I should, I should let you know about a Golf Weekly classic that we're having. It's uh, next Monday, 1st of July at Paris Court Golf Club in Wicklow. It's a pretty nice offering. Shotgun start at two, 18 holes of golf, food afterwards, a special live Golf Weekly podcast recording. We'll look ahead to the Irish Open and it's all free. Good deal. Not bad deal, is it? Yeah. All you have to do if you want to be in the draw to come along is uh, no catch. Text the word GOLF, 53106, your name, and uh, do include your name, and text cost 30 cent. Every person selected will get to bring a friend on the day. I'm pretty sure we're massively oversubscribed already, but you can still get that text in and be in with a chance of coming along uh, when we pick everybody out of the draw. We'll be in touch in the next day or two if, you're, uh, if you've are if you made the cut. And this is all to celebrate Ah, uh, I see what you did there. I didn't even mean to. Wow, yeah, such that's a how good. Such a problem. That's just a sign. You should have, people who don't make it, you should send them some kind of, sorry you've missed a cut, some kind of golf. You sure, can throw sure. in some quip of some kind, Joe. Yeah. You know the lingo. Yeah, you know? I just sure do, Dan. You haven't made the weekend. Yeah, you know? good, good. Yeah. Yeah. It'll uh, be moving day when they're getting on the plane, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> this is all to celebrate the 2019 Off The Ball Open, the OTB crew, along with special guest Kevin Kilban, who'll be there actually at Paris Court. Uh, playing as well. Kieran Donaghy, Peter Laurie and more taking on two of the best courses on the planet, the Yaz Links and the National for the first ever Off The Ball Open this November. Trip includes five nights in a four star hotel, a Peter Laurie golf clinic, gala dinner and an Off The Ball roadshow. That's November 17th to 23rd in Abu Dhabi and if you're interested in that you can sign up at offtheball.com forward slash open. So offtheball.com forward slash open is where you'll get details uh, there. Short break, we're back with Jackie Oatley. Off the ball on News Talk. Brought to you by Avant Card, powered by MasterCard. Get cash back on your everyday spend with the Avant Card Reward Plus Credit Card. Avant Card DAC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. When you're buying groceries, you think about the number of calories, you think about the ingredients, you think about the best before date. But do you ever think about where it was grown? Who picked it? Who packed it? Does your money go into the pockets of local people? It's not.